This is the Museum of Creative Human Art, where we continue to inspire the creation of art in underserved communities. My name is Mike Russell, and my co-host Antoine Washington, and today we have a special guest, Lauren Pierce. What's good? What's up, Appreciate Lauren? you, appreciate you, Lauren. Appreciate you, uh, well, actually, today we're in your studio. Yes. And I am, I'm kind of thrown back by just all of the the big, beautiful work, beautiful work that's in here and Colorful, the huge canvases. Beautiful. So uh, I appreciate you opening your doors. Absolutely. So uh, again, this is a conversation. And again, I, you can kind of just relax. Uh, we want to kind of go away from uh, just your, your normal artist talks where they're real stuffy and just, yeah. uh, just be relaxed and just have a good conversation. Uh, so we're coming off of actually a few months ago, you, you actually graced our gallery, the Mocha Gallery over at May Hall Lanes. You, you kind of grace us with your, with your artwork and you had a great turnout, great show. It was awesome. Titled When Color Heals the Rest. Yes. And so what made that the, the theme of your show, considering everything that we're going through in the world right now with COVID-19 and just going into what well, we're, we're in the winter now? Um, what made you come up with that, that title? Obviously I love color. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking about really what I wanted to do for that show. Yeah. And there were a couple options. I know Anthony and I talked about a couple of the styles that I have and thinking about what I really wanted to do. And I think that I was emotionally exhausted at the time yeah. when I was thinking about stuff. And I think so often we like... As black artists, we have to like, we're only relevant if we're drawing from our pain, if we're talking about our struggles. Yeah. Uh, and I just didn't want the show to be centered around that. So I really, thinking back on, you know, the last couple months, this past year with COVID, quarantine, all that stuff, I really wanted to focus on the relationships in my life. Mm -hmm. And because I wouldn't be where I'm at without those relationships. And I feel like, especially in the last year, so many of those relationships have changed me in so many ways this year. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about when the color heals the rest, color for me, there's healing in that. Being in the studio, there's healing in that. But those relationships are also the things that have have helped heal me also. For sure. So I really wanted to do something where I was really celebrating the people in my life more so than like it being about me. It was about the people that I was painting. Oh. So that's where when the color heals the rest comes from. Wow! Wow! Beautiful. It, so Beautiful. I'm looking at I'm as I'm looking at all of your artwork. It's yeah. always it seems like it's centered around color just in itself. Yeah. yeah. And so to to see that color and to also hear that you're from this sunny place. Yes. Florida. Yes. Miami, Florida, right? West Palm Beach. It's not West far. <laughs> I think people only okay. say Miami because no one knows born, anywhere else. You born else there too, right? No, I was actually born in Detroit. See? We've talked what? about this. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but I just, had to, I just had, to, time. I had to read the Yes, yeah, so you just, Read the yeah. back okay. to the cold a little bit. <laughs> okay. That's all. That's all. I was born in Detroit. We moved down to Florida, South Florida when I was three. Okay. And I've been there ever since. Okay. So yeah. it's just, it's crazy to me how your work is bright and you're from a place like yeah. that. Yeah. And, and so how that, how that translates is kind of. I kind think of, it got even different. more colorful and brighter when I moved here also. Really? I think the grayness just like sucks you dry. Dang. Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and so many people here are afraid of color. I think that I needed to like... Bring Florida. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot okay. of people are afraid of color here. They really are. Yeah. Huh. For sure. So moving from Detroit to Miami. Yeah. Being born, well, West raised Miami. there. Yeah. Well, not Miami. But close, close okay. enough, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> okay, so being from there as a child, growing yeah. up, were you this child prodigy, this artist who everybody was oh, just God. like, that girl, she's the artist. Was that a thing? or? If my dad was sitting here, which you just met, missed him, like he was here two weeks ago, really? he would okay. say that yes. I don't yeah. think so. I feel like art has always been a part of my life. It is the way I grew up. both my parents are artists in very different ways and very different for me also. Um, and he, my mom's side of the family, I spent so much time around my grandparents' dining room table creating with them. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I was kind of a loud, uh, obnoxious child that mm. like loved to dance and sing. Uh, my stepdad has led singing in our church down in South Florida for 
many, 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 many years. Yeah. So we've done like solos together for church and stuff like that. So that was really what I did. And then, you know, when I got in middle school and high school, it became like, okay, Lauren's an artist. But oh. never did I think, I don't want to say never did I think, I always thought that I would come back to here, but just not not like this and not in the way that I did. Hmm. And so it just happened organically. And I think so, yeah. yeah. Very okay. much so. Okay. Do, do you think do you think well, I think uh with the prodigy thing, I think you you got to be a little bit because you didn't, you didn't I don't know if I'm a prodigy. Well, well, the reason why I say that is because you didn't really technically go to art school. No. no. And so I think most child prodigies kind of like pull from some type of inner creative thing that's not so-called like institutionalized in an artistic way but like, i did go to a high school that was audition based and it was one of the top oh so like, it was like an art school it, in, it in was like i feel like that like the education that i got there within the visual arts community like i mean i was having portfolio reviews with colleges in my freshman year of high school okay so i was oh, always okay. used to okay. like i mean that, like like being critical about so my whip, artwork like so that having that thick skin yeah. i think so i mean i didn't get go to college but I think it definitely prepared me and like nurtured the love that I have for creating. I got you. I Big got time. You. I got you. Yeah. I got you. But you've I, always had it though. I've you, always you've had always it. You've always had this I've gift inside it. of you. So to Antoine's point, it's kind of like something that you had and they just kind of brought it out even more. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Was yeah. it something else you, you were about to say though? I know. No, I, I, I said, man, so you're a prodigy pretty much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go on and give it to you. Okay. Just, just because I mean like your technique. You have so many. I mean, you write. You remind me a lot of of me yeah. as an artist. As far as like, we don't do the same art, but we do similar kind of like ways that we approach. Yeah, I want to taste things. everything. You want to taste that, and that's everything. how I am. So that's the reason why I'm like, I never went to art school yeah. until my first art class was in college. Yeah, and so I didn't get the critical stuff. But it, I had to pretty much learn a different way. Yeah. And so I get exactly where you're coming from, but I always was the kid that was that. So yeah. that's why I say, like, you, okay. you had to be a prodigy. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, you had to be. How, so how much, practice, how much practice went into that? Into what? Being a prodigy? Just, yeah, I mean, so because you're, <laughs> you're thinking, I'm thinking you're in high school. Did you find yourself practicing all the time? Like, say, for example, I play basketball. So yeah. They would always tell us coming from basketball camp or whatever the case may be, get your hours in, make sure you yes. get your hours in. Oh, so for was that sure. a thing? Yeah, I mean, you're if you're there because you auditioned for this thing, it is just as important as your academics were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like we had shows and we yeah. had portfolio reviews with our teachers. Every semester we had to have all this work. For sure. So like that was practicing was part of my life mm -hmm. and and not just the practice part of it but it just became this discipline thing which is also practice right. um but yeah i mean morning noon and night mm. i was drawing staying after school i was in the visual arts building i was drawing i was creating i did very different stuff i was actually did more my work then was more with with a pencil than it was. I know you remember. I remember with, you telling yeah, me that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I could not do portraits with for the life pencil. of me. Really? I couldn't. I could paint, but not very well. I could draw, but like now I can't draw for shit. Really? Yes, you can. You can draw. It's like riding a bike. You can. You <laughs> I just, don't know. You just don't have the patience. I think right it. Now. I don't have the patience, but I'm also a little terrified of 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 pencil that. is terrifying. But you. I mean, why is that though? And I ask that because yeah. I even ask you is yeah. why is the pencil terrifying? And I ask you that because, you know, we deal with young people all the time. Yeah. And so why is it terrifying and how do you get over that? I think the process yeah. is so very different than painting. It is. You have drawing that's a part of it, but the drawing, you're like building on something. Draw painting for me feels more of like 3D. It feels more sculpt sculptural mm -hmm. than drawing. It is two dimensional, but like you don't have as many tools to make that look good. Yeah. You have this one thing. One thing. Wow. And it's like, for me, I think people that can draw, that's from, that's talent to me. It's like people that can really draw realistically, that's t that's like raw talent. I think a lot of people can be very messy with their pain. Like, oh, that's artwork. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's fine art. You can't do that when you're doing, when you're working with a pencil. Uh, so that takes you back to the original, this is yeah, the, foundation. the foundation. Yes. Yeah. And you need that's that. That's why I said she yeah. can still do it. It's just, a, I think she's just in the mode of liking to sculpt. I do. I do. That's. That, I mean. That's I think, it. Yeah, it's either you I gotta do. love drawing, yeah. or you, you. You. Once you fall in love, sometimes with painting and just getting it done and liking and finding yeah. that rhythm and what it is that you're doing, 
And I think where you're going with your work is beautiful. I don't think you need to, you know, maybe later, like when yeah. you sell these pieces for millions of dollars, That'd then you can cool. sit back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then you can say, man, That's you know, right. I'm going to pick this pencil back up. But I get it. I mean, you got to have a lot of patience yes. to sit there and really make something look. And you have, you're right. You have to love it. You got to love it. That has to be something that you love. Yeah. Because it can, it's very tedious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's also, I get a little bored. Yeah. yeah. Like it I, is boring. Really? It is. Okay. It's, it's like, I like using the messy. colors. And it, yeah, like when yeah. It be I mean, it obviously is. this is messy in here. No. I'm a messy person. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good messy. It has some, some character to yeah. everything that I'm. It's a studio. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh -huh. supposed to be messy. My studio ain't messy as yours well, yeah, because I have a... <laughs> your house would yours. kill you. Yeah, yeah, because I get killed if my yes. shit was this messy. Uh, but whatever. This is mine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Huh. So I, I will say in doing some research, because um, although this is a conversation, I still want to come in with a little bit of understanding of who you are okay. as, as a person. And so um, Ready, at the Mike. age of 24, you said, you know what? Let me let me start taking this serious. Why 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 twenty four? What was the significance with that? Uh, so. Or. How old was Keegan? <laughs> Keegan, I had Keegan at twenty one, and that was a little after he was diagnosed with autism. Okay. And um, I was doing cakes for a while, and I was killing it at that, but it was draining. I love doing cakes, but I also really hate doing cakes. Um, and I mean, it was awesome and I was good at it, but I knew it wasn't the thing I was supposed to do. So we moved into my ex-husband and I in Florida moved into this place. We, on the same street he grew up in and, um, his landlord, uh, or our landlord, uh, owned the restaurant at the end of our street had also grew, Ryan knew him growing up and, um, he actually commissioned me for my first piece since high school. And it was in right. that moment that, like, he told me after we were done, it's like, this is what you should be doing. Wow. I don't know why you're doing that, wow. but this is where your energy needs to so go. So he said, them cakes, you need to, even though they dope, they taste good. That this is, like, this, this is, is you. this is the thing that I need to be For doing. Sure. He's like, I, sure. you're wasting your time. This is where your energy wow. should be put. And, like, that is the jump start of my art career. That's fine. Wow. That's yeah. fine. Literally someone outside of yourself. Yeah. Had to tell you, hey, but this is it, and you listened. You listened I did. to that. This was also okay. a very different version of myself. Yeah, I was a young mom with two kids, very insecure, but still like figuring out who I was and yeah. finding my way. For sure, my play was full, and I'm like, this is the thing that I was always supposed to do. I think I just had. You Simple. listen. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. And I think that's yeah. also important. I don't think we have to take everybody's opinions and words mm -hmm. for our own, but I think there are times where like people are saying stuff that like I really think we need to slow it down and listen to the wow. things that people are saying. And it's something about that moment, in moments in our lives, just in general, where we make a decision that yeah. can change our life forever. It Facts. really did. Facts. That yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing to me yeah. is how that happens, and whether it's good or bad. Yeah. So in that decision, you've, you've kind of progressed and you've obviously have built so much of value as an artist. Um, how do you, and, and you mentioned your son, how do you manage that? How do you balance the work, work home, work life, kids? I told myself I wasn't going to cry again, but that's just like, <laughs> uh, All I, this work. Well, we, we already all know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I Sometimes yeah. I do it so poorly and I have to like apologize to clients and customers. And that's just the reality of it. And I think especially this year, I've had to show myself so much more grace. Yeah. And also turn people away. Yeah. And I've also given refunds. I like, I just don't want to compromise my own sanity you for like the thing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then I'll start resenting this. And this is the thing that like saves my life every single day. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to ever resent it. So I don't think there's any balancing that goes on here. Okay. I think there's um, sometimes one part of my life gets more yeah. than other parts of my life. Uh, with Keegan, it's a challenge. There are things that, that go along with autism and specifically Keegan and autism that like is straining uh, emotionally and physically in ways that like if I'm behind on a project, I can't. And good conscious and to protect my son, I can't be like, well, this is what's going on. And also to protect my privacy. This is why I'm behind and where it feels very valid to yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, it's just, 
I don't know. I don't think that there is a whole lot of grace outwardly when people think about artists and yeah, the fact yeah. that like we're creating something that is a part of us. That's a fact. Um, and it's it's not just like a product. It is literally we're outpouring like yeah. who we are onto canvas. Yeah. Maybe not for everybody. I know it is for you. For sure. I know it is for me, and it's an emotional process. Um, but balancing, I don't think there is a such thing when you have kids and you're a parent and a single parent. Yeah. So it I has to be a lifestyle. Then. It has to be a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is the perks of having a studio in my home. I can come whenever I want to. I definitely think I'm, I'm over that. Yeah, uh, I need boundaries. Time. Yeah. You, need the, you need that separate. I'm, seeing, yeah. I'm feeling it too, for sure. We need, yeah. we need boundaries. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it's it's been a lifestyle thing. Sometimes there's really great moments and sometimes there's really hard moments where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> For but sure. my uh, Dylan has told me so many times there's there is no way that I could work a normal job. Yes. And that, that's gonna be my kid. Yeah, that'd be impossible because yeah. I think but I think with what you're doing is so much pain in the work within the strokes, within how you're building the layers and just the color, even the what you call messy, which I don't call. I think it's a beautiful yeah. mess. But what I think is there is that pain of getting to where you're going with every piece. So you so you have to be somewhat like, okay, if you're not going to respect my time or you're not going to respect how this process goes, then I don't need to do it. I don't Absolutely. need your money. You know I think I mean? that it, the business will always come. Yeah. I'll do it better next time. Yeah. I'll handle that situation better next time. Yeah. I think that there's, there's, I used to think that like, I can't be the, I'm the only one that's like messing up or like nah. falling short. My, I don't, nah. That's not the case, nah. especially this year. That's definitely yeah. not the nah. case. Nah. And I feel like if we can't meet an understanding and like, then maybe it wasn't meant to work out and mm. I will make up that money somewhere else. That's a fact. That's how that's I feel fact. about it. That's a fact. Absolutely. You're a machine though. I see how you uh-huh. work. It's like, how, how do you, how do you find that time, uh, in between pieces because I see like I'm in your studio now so I'm seeing like three pieces at a time and I know how I do it but I just wanted to get an inside look on like how you balance in between pieces because it's like that's kind of that's kind of tough when you're outpouring and you're inspired but then you're jumping from piece to piece what what keep are are the three pieces that you have on your wall that I'm looking at now is that something that you tend to like do a lot to keep you going as far as like to help you finish pieces or is that some, or is it, or, or, cause it looked like you got a production line going on. I do. I do. <laughs> and so, uh. and so, uh, and, and, and I understand, like, I know you do a lot of stuff with clients. I know you do a lot yeah. of stuff for people, but, um, and my practice is a little different, but I'm looking at you as like, man, she got this thing. Like she's a, a human machine. So I understand what, what, where, where, where some of that, Frustration comes in that because it's like you got an assembly line going on. Yeah. So how did how do you how how do you do it? Because it's hard for me to do it. So I just want to know how how do you balance that? I got a therapist this year. Okay. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Okay. Okay. Best thing I ever did for myself has been okay. wonderful. I do. I think it's such a cliche, but I think there are like it's a borderline of madness. I yeah. think mm-hmm. so sometimes with artists and like sometimes I I teeter that a little bit. Yeah. I do have to watch myself, but I also know that like if I'm not here, then like I, I can feel myself other in other ways like really uh, there is some tension in relationships and gotcha. I'm not spending more time here. Yeah. So I mean, for me, I there's things I definitely have tried this year. Yeah. And my approach to things, there's things that like I figured out this year that I want to bring into next year. Yeah. That being the stuff that I'm painting, because then I'm like, I could have that assembly line if I love what I'm creating. If you love yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Right. And like right. that comes yeah. super easy. So like these three pieces, you know, it's the stuff that I want to, I'm just so happy painting it. Yeah. I'm yeah. so happy painting it. So like when I'm inspired, I can knock out. I mean, for the show we did, that yeah. was yeah. in a month, yeah. less than a month. That was, yeah. most of that was two weeks. Yeah, you knocked it out. So like if I am inspired and the can, the, the fire is lit, I can knock stuff out. Got you. A lot of times, sometimes I'll sit on a project and it'll take me months to like pick up that paintbrush. Yeah. And like, then I'll like procrastinate a little bit. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I gotta do this thing. So then I do it. I'm like, okay, this took me like that. But still, it's, I don't know. I feel like when I'm in it, like nothing else matters. And like, sometimes I'll be 
in it and then step away. I'm like, I have no idea how I did that. Yeah. My hands are not my own. Yeah. Like my mind is completely wrapped and involved into every stroke, every layer. Yeah. And it's it's wow. a spiritual experience, wow. I feel like, wow. most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And like I also feel like I have no options. I have two children that depend on me. Mm-hmm. And like You gotta do it. I have to do it. Yeah. There's no way around it. Like if I'm not doing this thing, then like who else is? That's a and fact. like uh, Ashanti and I were just talking yesterday about relevancy and like that twisted, toxic mm-hmm. idea of that. But like, if I'm not producing, then you don't stay relevant as mm-hmm. an artist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, yeah. there's a lot of other artists, predominantly white artists, that yeah. can like. They can draw a line on it. The- and it's like, oh my God, yeah. do this amazing <laughs> thing. And like, we can't do that. We don't have We have we to have be that. excellent all the time. And that's, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. I, I, I feel that a lot too. I feel like. That's why I I, ste- I had to, I had to somewhat step away from like social media too because I felt yeah. like I was creating for social media yep. and not for myself and not for what I'm initially doing, uh, which I know that helps get your work out there and people to see it. But it's so much work out there and the algorithms is crazy and yep. all of this stuff going the on. Algorithms. You're fighting for all of this yep. attention. How do like 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 even in that like capitalism sucks. It, it, it's, it's, it's it's just like I I don't understand like how you know, we're always put in that position to be excellent every time. We can't have, and I don't even say a, a off day, but I just say like, man, even if we just want to just do something scribbly on a yeah. paint, you know what I mean? Like, why can't we just do that? But I it know. has to be excellent every time. And I and I see like every t- every time you coming out, you, you swinging, you know what I mean? To knock the home run every time. I don't time. know if I'm doing that, but I'm trying. Oh, man, you're, no, doing, you're it. doing it. You're doing it. You're doing sure. it. We, we, we experienced For it. Sure. And we're watching it, and, we, and we're enjoying what we're seeing. So, man, congratulations on just the, the output of creativity and beautiful work you've been doing the whole year. And For believing sure. in yourself. Yeah. The belief in yourself. And looking at your work, I'm almost seeing that it's, it's different emotions inside of it. So you may come up here one day feeling great, and then the next yeah. day feeling sad where you're like, I'm still going to go in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can see it in the paintings. Yeah. And so that emotional piece that you're talking about, that spiritual piece that you're talking about, I'm a, I'm an empathic person, so I can feel it when yeah. I come up, when I yeah. come here. And I'm like, yeah. It's a sanctuary. Wow. So there's, yeah. that's I a great word. I have had some friends that are very scared of that <laughs> charcoal work. I'm like, that's my favorite work. No, I think But you- there was so much stuff that was, that was like, I just got rid of all the junk. Yeah. It was a dance. That was a spiritual. I cried multiple times on that series and then my self series. But see, this is where we met. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I think I think those pieces, like when you're when you're kind of like loose and abstract, I think those pieces are some of the most powerful pieces because it's it's you can see the violence in the strokes. You can see what you and feel what you were going through. And I think when people make that judgment of that work, I think. You know what I mean? I I just don't think that they understand how therapeutic that work and is personal. and how personal yeah. it is, mm-hmm. but how much that actually is really a lot of you right. in yeah. the work. And yeah. it's yeah. not dictated yep. by, like some of this stuff could be dictated For by sure. other stuff, but that's you. I so know. I think that's probably, would probably be like your, 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 your best work when, when, when you're dead and gone, people going to really I look know. at that and say, she was going through some shit, and then we're talking about it now, and basically you saying that, and we got we got that on mm-hmm. on film to be able to you know actually like add I that to that. I think people can see that, and yeah. I think that not everyone is in the same place, and I think sometimes that kind of vulnerability is scary to other people. Mm. That's a fact. Mm. And I think when you're seeing people in that like very raw way, is not everyone is a, is comfortable with that approach. Yeah, for sure, mm. for sure. And I think that is the difference. And I, I do, there are people that like love that series. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that love it because they're digging are people that are very real. Yeah. Hold themselves accountable. Are people that are trying to grow yeah. and like yeah. reach and like draw out all the the gunk that's in their lives. That's a fact. That's a hmm. fact. No, no. I, I I told you that work was powerful, man. I just, I it takes me back to something that. Well, we talked about the drawing earlier. Yeah. It's like you're using one thing yeah. to 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 actually scream out and to be able to say something with yeah. just one instrument, and that's beautiful, man. Yeah. I think that's wow. powerful. Thank wow. you. Yeah. Uncertain. So you seem to be comfortable with uncertainty. I don't know if you've gotten to that place, 
But kind of to me, when I'm looking at that painting that he's that Antoine's speaking of, it's it's uncertain at that time. Yeah, and, and so it, yeah, that's just a whole nother uh, conversation. However, speaking of, I, I want to talk about inspiration. Okay. I want to say uh, probably a month ago, you oh, put me God. on to somebody, <laughs> this woman who is incredible. I know. I know. I continue to look at her, Bisa Butler. Yeah. Her is she inspirational yeah. to you? Her stories are like, yeah. Thank you, number one. You're welcome for for you know just introducing me to this giant of a woman artist, and I cannot I can't wait to the the day I'm able to meet her and really kind of you know um, talk to her in yeah. this kind of in this kind of fashion. But inspiration is she an inspirational kind of person to you? Because I see you kind of you do similar work. I know. So, so I I found out about her because someone was like, "Oh, your work looks like her," and I'm like, "Whoa." <laughs> so then I found her work and I'm like, I'm a little, little, as we ain't the same, yeah. but right. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I'll take yeah. it, yeah. but we're not the Shit, same. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. The we're not, we're, no, I just, I'm, I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. There. I'm not there yet. Yeah, you're there. She just does, she just works in a different medium. Yeah. But you're there. But that shit is real good. Well, it's just, it's just a different medium. I That's know. That's it. I know. Your shit I just, hit real good too. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Like, it's, it's, it's like someone using auto tone, and then someone's just rapping with their regular mm-hmm. voice. It's that's like, true. Wow. That's it's true. a different instrument. That's it's just it. it's the layers of her work, the colors of her it. work, the intention of her work. Right. It's it's a thing like when you're growing up as an artist, it's like looking at that, especially mm-hmm. since I'm thinking of the people I learned about in high school and my art history class yeah. we didn't learn about black artists mm. other than the or the artwork that was stolen yeah we didn't learn about any contemporary modern artists yeah so like to see people like Bisa butler and i can name so many more yeah, that are like these upcoming yeah. artists that are, are black artists i'm like there's sure. so much yeah. good work coming from our communities yeah, right it's now juicy. A lot of- <laughs> it's so good so i'm like i'm thinking about all the ways all the books they're going to be in and how that's going to shape that the bl- black artists yeah. that are kids now yeah. and who they're going to see and how that is going to completely change. Yeah. So for me, f- how I see her is this person that is changing things mm-hmm. and a word that is colorful. There's a lot of, there's a lot of styles that are on trend, but hers is different to me. Mm-hmm. 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 And like, because it's so layered because there's so much of a story that's there with every single patchwork. I just feel like it, it is incredibly powerful. And because it is, it feels like a sculpture as well. Yeah. Like way more yeah. than some other artists that are doing, you know, patchwork and paintings, including myself. Like it feels more visceral to me. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. I think I think she she puts me in a a mindset of uh, Faith Ringo of today, like how Faith Ringo kind of told those stories through quilt. Mm. Yeah, and during that time, yeah, and, and, I, and they just they have it's not as colorful, but it's I mean it, of course it's colorful, but it's not as intense in color. Yeah, it's but different. It's different, but she just reminds me of just someone who probably was w- what you're talking about, looking at Faith Green Gold and the different quilted artists that came before her, and just kind of like studied them, and then kind of just found her voice within that actual yeah. medium mm-hmm. or whatever she's using. I think I think that's what is going to be great about the next generation is they able to watch us in real time oh, yeah. and then they're able to take and then run. I with literally it. Yeah. cannot wait to see what comes out. <laughs> oh yeah. It's going like, to it's gonna be crazy, man. Absolutely. It's going to be crazy. They got a, 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 a real time look at artists just yeah. like on social media. Mm-hmm. We didn't get that. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's, that's beautiful. I didn't know any big famous black artists when I was a kid. And, and why? It, and so that for me, it's mm-hmm. like, why is that? We, our par- some of our parents knew of them, and why weren't they important mm. at that time? Especially during those, this, just especially during those pivotal times yeah. in Black America. Mm-hmm. I'll, yes. I'll use that word. There were so many giants coming along, and they just were overlooked. I mean, my experience and my upbringing was very different than y'all's. Uh, it. The things that were talked about and the lessons that were taught were very different. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of um, self-realizing and coming to terms with things and education and um, ownership, as well as a lot of other things I had to do as an adult. 
that just didn't take place in my home. Yeah. And um, there were a lot of conversations that I wish would have happened. They just didn't. Mm. So I decided to do that stuff and seek that knowledge and stuff myself. Um, I, I wish it would have been. It just It just wasn't. But I also think that like we didn't have social media growing up, so like no, we didn't. even the concept of like talking about yeah. you know black artists wasn't thing because it just wasn't as as well publicized mm-hmm. either. That's a fact. That's a fact. The way that we do now, yeah. even without social media, there's just so many more of us that I feel like even if we didn't have Instagram or Facebook, it would still somehow like seep down into our conversations. Wow. Right. Wow. Right, right, and I and I think uh, it goes back to that history. But I think also what's great about us not having the social media then, and us, it, it takes our work on the self discovery now. Like where I yeah. think now, when you're being intentional, not saying like you're you're you like oh I gotta go read up on this person so I can yeah. make art. But I'm just saying like while you're in it and you're learning it and you're it, it actually brings forth like an identity that you can see yourself before. Like, oh, wow, yeah. he was doing that type of work? Yeah. So everybody's complaining about the work that this person is doing, but they were doing that in the 60s. They were doing yeah. that in the 70s. Mm-hmm. So I just think it, for me, I thought, I mean, you know, like seeing like, because uh, I didn't have that either. Like coming up, I didn't have like a huge black history, yeah. like family where that just kind of like put me on artists and yeah. art and all of that. I didn't know anything about art. I just knew I could draw and I just knew people always wanted me to draw stuff. But then it wasn't until I got to college where I was able to go down that path yeah. and find myself within art to be able to find my voice. And so that's what I that, that that's what I see in you is I see a lot of the work that you're doing from what I'm looking in the studio is like all of these different works are personal journals in a sense. Like they really in, are. And in, in time stamps. I love in you, your life. Antoine. You just get it. <laughs> <laughs> and time stamps in your life where yeah. I'm seeing the personal journey of of you trying to find who you are because that's a lot of what I do. And so nah, man, I, I, I commend you on that as well. Just, just from artist to artist. I yeah. just, I see it. We're, we're like writers. Writers have their journals. They can jot things down. There's, there's, you can tell where they are at yeah. because the words that they're using and, and what they're saying. But like for artists, it, it is very similar. For sure. Mm-hmm. At least for artists that are really trying to be vulnerable with their work. Yeah. And where it's personal. Because yeah. there are a lot yeah. of artists that paint lines. And that's yeah. fine too. Yeah. Yeah. But like I, I want I don't know, I want there is this this in between of like wanting to be vulnerable but also wanting privacy. But like with artwork, it's like that is where I feel the safest to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. It is feels very different than mm-hmm. like sharing my life on social media in in that it's like it's it feels a lot more terrifying there's a lot more opinions i don't give a crap what people think about my artwork because it i don't know there's there's it's like my weapon it's my shield yes but it's also this place where i feel incredibly comfortable to be completely myself and vulnerable within that Mm. yeah Mm. yeah wow so it's almost like a to me as i'm you know listening to you and antoine kind of Go back and forth about it. It's, it's it's almost like literature, yeah. And it makes me it makes me wonder. Back back in, in in the day, they would talk about hide this book. You can't read. They don't want blacks to read. Yeah. You have to hide things from us. So why is art hidden from mm. Mm. this generation, mm. the generation before us? This it's, it's it's art. So it's it's making me feel like there's something powerful going on. In art, that's not being told. Yeah, I mean, that's it's not it's, being said. It's not being educated on. Same thing with music, though. <laughs> I mean, like, like Nina Simone called us like we're we're supposed to, we have an obligation. Yeah, obligation. as black artists, whether you're a musician, whether you're a writer, whether you're a visual artist, yeah. like we are here. We need to tell our stories. You have to, and like that is the thing that like people don't want to see because there's so much truth, or there can be a lot of truth that is told through. The brush, the pencil, yes. the canvas, mm-hmm. the sculptures, like, and it's the way that, like, people that have no attachment to art, I will mm-hmm. meet people and they'll cry to me about mm-hmm. the things that they see. And, like, that is the most incredible, yeah. powerful thing that you can do as an artist is, like, make people feel something, whether feel it's something. angry mm-hmm. or happy yeah. or um, any, um, any, any emotion. emotion. Yeah. And, yeah. like, there's so much, I mean, 
art starts revolutions. It like does. art has a power of like, wow. I don't know, healing people. It can use be used as propaganda. Use as propaganda. <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, it definitely right. can uh, do yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> we have yeah. seen that. Yeah, for sure. Huh. So that so that it would be the the a version of television. Visually, to see something yeah. and it draw up an emotion. Yeah. Yeah. No different than what we look for at on sure. TV. Sure. We're looking sure. at a piece and we're, we're looking saying, looking at uh, still motion picture in a right. sense. Like but you that. only get one of that. But you only get one. You only get, you one. Only get one of that. Yeah. One shot. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you just, you got me really thinking it, right now. It goes now. back to like with me having a conversation when I was in college uh, with one of the homies talking about like how to, like during the Renaissance period, they didn't have television, so they pretty much painted. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. So that was their television. That yeah. was their social media. <laughs> right. was, so real. you had to be like Michelangelo and all these guys. Yeah. They had to be these great artists or these well, masters. Think about the concept of television, though. We got picture shows. You got picture stills. That's it. Yeah. And then how that like that that's yeah. photography, yeah. Yeah. artwork, like exactly. that. And then the, how that evolved. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we still have this. We also. still have it though. Yeah. 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 It's like an artifact now. Like if you like. When you die, you know, like you existed. Like when you when you pass on, you're leaving. You're leaving an, a, a footprint. Wasn't it crazy? It's That's kind of crazy. crazy. It's like about it's like you like damn. When I'm this is gonna still be here, and know, people are of, still gonna be viewing this stuff. But sometimes I think about burning some of the stuff. I'm like, I don't want y'all to do ah. that. That's not the stuff <laughs> don't I do want that. you to don't see. Do that. We want, no. want to see this. Or you gonna be on somebody's jacket? <laughs> okay, why are we coming for people right now? <laughs> Cause you know how they do. Make sure your estate together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they'll be putting your putting your uh, stuff everywhere. Stuff on some Timberland boots. I trust. Or something. I trust the Shanti. On some okay. diapers. Or something. If I go first, <laughs> on some diapers. On some diapers. <laughs> okay. I hope not. Pampers. You, you know, Pampers know do the Lauren Lauren designs slab. No, we ain't gonna be on no diapers. Co- collab with Pampers or something like that. You wouldn't <laughs> want to see. Huggy? That's some huggy. I had to throw nah, stuff weird in there. That. So there's pill on my arm. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, so. I was gonna say what inspires you. I mean, not what inspires you, but what does art mean to you? But you, you've already, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you've laid that, you've laid that it's out. My so, life, and I've and I've watched how colors have also changed. Correct. Yeah. Mm. So when you talked about and you you just you put you've educated me on this platform today is if you can say that not Bisa Butler, but who inspired uh, her and Ringo. What's yeah. her name? Faith Ringo. Faith Ringo. Yeah. And so she came before yeah. Pisa, correct? So yeah. when you talk about, when, when I think about colors and how they've changed, yeah. Yeah. she just didn't have access she just to didn't those have colors. Yeah. Yeah. But also, it... colors are very, very expensive. There's like a little tube of paint that you'll be like, oh, I want that color. And it's like $40 for that golden? a little tube. <laughs> like, oh, but like, there's some blues that are yeah. really expensive. Like, yeah. color is very expensive. They know how to jack it up. On oh, yeah. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, you making all the money? I'm like, you have no idea yeah. how much art supplies yeah. cost. It costs, yeah. it costs a lot. It costs a lot it costs of money. A lot. <laughs> so you experiencing the faith and you're, you're experiencing Bisa, you're next. And so when Antoine talks about, and so the reason why I say that, you're next, you're in their space because you're doing the work, you've done it, you've continued to practice, you know about them, you, you've edu- you're have you educated on them, you're looking at their work, so you're inspired by them, yeah. you're next. And so how do you move forward? They were big on women, it seems to be. I can't wait to have this conversation with Bisa, but looking at her work, they're big... Um, they're big on womanhood. They're strong women. I know I, you don't want to take that off, <laughs> but I just, I, for me, I'm, I'm like, yeah. Lauren, you're there. Yeah. I don't feel that yet. You're I feel like I have to. so much to learn mm-hmm. and so many areas to grow in. There are so many things that I like. I want to be better at and grow mm. in. Uh. I am in a place. Mm-hmm. I will say that I'm. I'm at the next step. I don't know if I'm there. I just know that I'm. I'm happy Can and I, I feel good at the place that I'm no, at. No, I'm gonna always ask you this. All what right. Is, what, no, what, wait. Wait. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> wait. Is, wait is, let no, me. Please. 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 What please. is there? Yeah. <laughs> what is there? Because I always. I always What's hear there? people say, "I'm not there yet." But what is there? Because everyone's there. It's different. Is it a certain like? Is it a certain like job or a certain collector or is it? Who has to actually give you the give you the uh, what I would say the, the the stamp? I don't know if it's about anybody else. 
Yeah. I feel like it's it's truly is about myself. Yeah. And it's it's I want to be more at at ease. Yeah. And I want to be in a space where I am. There is a freedom to experiment and create. Yeah. Um, with not as many restrictions. Gotcha. I feel like when you're trying to get to a certain place, you're hustling a lot. I hate it. I hate the hustle. That's yeah. capitalism. Mm-hmm. I want artists to be able to, at the beginning, create freely. Yeah. I think a lot of times, a lot of us kind of pay our dues, which is also crap. Yeah. That we're like doing all the things for the clients. Yeah. I think that I am pretty much out of that place. Yeah. Um, but the next place I want to be is to be in a place where I'm not having to like count those little things, yeah. Yeah. those little dollar signs, yeah. and to like be able to. Relax a little bit. Relax yeah. and yeah. with and like fully dive into the artwork where I'm just like melting into it. Yeah. So the things that I'm I'm creating are there are so many things I want to experiment with and so many processes that I want to try. Yeah. The charcoal series, I wanna like give an entire year to that. Yeah. But it's hard to do that. And I mm. feel like once I'm in a place where I'm financially stable. You can do that. That I can do that. Okay. So that to me, that's it's not even about I the recognition. It is about it's the place more so that like I, a, uh, the, the freedom to create the without f- having yeah. to worry about all of the all other the other stuff, stuff. Yeah. all yeah. the other stuff, which yeah. it might I might never be there, and I hope I can still you know, find I, that. And you, you know, I almost <laughs> okay, <laughs> almost uh, cursed you, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, uh-huh. but however, you, you're there, and, 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 and reason why I say, reason why I ask that is it is it that because I mean I'm always telling artists too that you have to afford yourself enough. You you don't want to, the dollars or the pr- issues around sure. you to get in the way of creating what it is that you're trying because that's sure. what you're ultimately saying is that you want to have the freedom to really really make the work. Yeah. That you want to make from an honest place and not from a place of everyone else dictating and everything else dictating. Okay, so I feel like I'm doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just maybe not at the scale that I would like to do it. So the self okay. series. Yeah. Okay. One piece from that show okay. sold. Okay. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. That show was for me. Yeah. That was show was entirely for me. Yeah. And I do not regret an ounce of that. That show I gave everything Why to. Why do you think only one piece sold? I mean it. A lot of times, nudity doesn't sell when it's not abstract. Mm. People don't really want uh, realistic, well, a realistic nude artwork of other people in their home. Uh, so a lot of times, I mean, mostly people will purchase nude work that is more abstract. I got you. It was also very personal, and a lot of people that came to my show knew me or knew of me. I got you, mm. and it was very. Cause I feel, like, I, f- I feel like if you took that somewhere else, maybe yeah, it would sell. Just because I think it's because it's so personal, and those people know you, it didn't sell yeah. like that. But I think if you took that to an art fair or something like that, where people, I think someone in Switzerland about that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it, it, it's just, it's just. I, I think yeah. what it is yeah. is that I think what art does is that I think. As artists, yeah. we get caught up in the consumerism too because we get caught on For what sure. sells. But yeah. however, I think someone told me one of my one of my friends was like, "No, your artwork speaks to the right. It, it sits there in in your studio or wherever it is yep. until that right person, person comes in there and sees it and Absolutely. it speaks to them. Yeah. So it has a energy on it. Yeah. That's gonna connect with whoever walks past it or whoever sees it. And yeah. so we we as I mean Van Gogh only sold. Like two pieces his whole life. One of them was his brother. I know. And now his work is <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, he, I'm not trying to do that though. But no, I'm just no, I'm just saying. Are I'm using him to... as an I'm using him as an example I to know. say like it's a different time now. You I oh, mean, for sure. whatever. But I'm just looking at that and saying how. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. how. And so when when we when we're having this conversation about selling, I think I think that I think you all of your works are going to. It it's probably won't sell and go into personal collections, all of them. But I believe a lot of this is going to sit in museums. Some of this stuff isn't meant for people's homes. Some of it is meant for history, a time when Lauren was going through this, and this is, you know what I mean. So I think you have to look at yourself in that way too. You know what I mean. So that's just, that's just how I, I, I see what's going on here. Why can't we see ourselves the way Antoine sees everybody mm. else? No, it's God just, dang, like, Antoine. No, it's it's just because that's how I think too. It's just like you you have to put your that 
yourself in that mind frame yeah. as an artist unless you're going to get caught up in how much shit sells. Yeah. So sales yeah. for sure. or whatever like that. So I kind of have to do that with myself because I don't make artwork that goes in people's home. I intentionally don't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I know that some of this stuff will go in someone's home. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I intentionally have to reverse engineer my mindset so I don't get caught up in that. Yeah. And so that's the reason why I'm like, nah, you're there. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this stuff is going to sit until that museum comes over and say, oh, yeah, we'll take all three of those. And then, That'll be the day. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And mm-hmm. so that's that's what that's how I see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that what right, you're doing. That right person, that right collector coming along and yeah. saying, this is mine. No yeah. different than, again, when we talked about literature, that book is for, it sits there until yeah. it finds that person to yeah. read it. And it, it every book has its own character. Yeah. So every piece has its own character and it has a few characters in it sometimes. Yeah. And so that that it that to me speaks volumes that that you can create something that has character on it that you can feel. Yeah. That's that's yeah. It's, it's almost it's almost powerful, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So growing so growing <laughs> up, did you uh She can't even believe it, huh? Right. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's still uncertain. Man. Man, but <laughs> so I have to kind of switch gears here because um, it, it's necessary. Okay. And then I also, I don't want to keep you too long. Okay. Um, we're big. Museum of Creative Human Art is big on mentorship. Yeah. And, and when I when I say mentorship, is is as young and dealing with young people and dealing with the, the underserved communities, we're going and doing programming that is centered around art and inspiring art. Mm. Do you believe that a a mentor as an artist is needed or do you just find your own way and i don't and i don't want to confuse so you I, we can scratch over that but i, I really want to know i want to know from your perspective is that needed or is it something that you just kind of just just finds you uh i think both i think that i didn't have a mentor but i think that was just because of accessibility I think that it was also um that kind of stuff was not facilitated I think when we were growing up I think now if I can make things easier and support kids like us growing up I I would prefer to do that yeah I don't think that it um would leave any bit of a negative mark if we're here mentoring even not even dictating or giving advice but just being there as a as a stepping stool for sure Mm -hmm. and whatever comes next for them Mm -hmm. so i do i think mentorship is um i think it's important and i think because of the stories and where we're at especially Mm -hmm. i feel like we do need to pour into our own community and our own our own kids um because it, it's not easy. Yeah. And yeah. like if we can yeah. make it easier and if we can breathe life and fire and like our knowledge without being, um, what's the word? Because I always, I feel like advice and mentorship can be sometimes tricky. And yeah. Advice yeah. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't know where advice. people are in their life. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it is. And I think we need to be really intentional about how and w- what we're speaking into people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and not projecting for sure. Yeah, Absolutely, you don't want to do that, yeah. especially with kids Absolutely. because they are sponges. But I think because it's art, I think we can show them people. We can show them our experiences. We can show them the color. We can give them the tools. We can introduce them to other techniques and uh, outlets. Mm-hmm. Um, where I think it really is used more as a benefit than anything else. Okay. If okay. that answers it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate it. I just wanted to get your, your perspective um, because I think it's unique to each artist that yeah. we even talk to. I mean, in, every individual has their own experiences. And like you say, you don't want to project whatever you're feeling at the time, yeah. or whatever you've been through yeah. on, on yeah. a young person. However, you saying that it's necessary, I, I just really just want to see what you thought because today as we're dealing with young people coming in through the doors it's 
I find it so important that we show them that creativity is the way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just saw that <laughs> post. Uh, what's her name? We end up chatting after I came and hung out with you guys. Her son, he was new and he was quiet. Oh, and he like came to life yeah. towards Kaden. the end. Kaden. 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 Like, yeah, yeah. and then Kaden. I saw the, I mean, yeah. like that's the, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Like that, I saw that and I'm, I like, I cried a little bit. <laughs> because like, he's yeah. going to remember that he's stuff. He's going to remember. You know what I mean? Gonna, and that's and, like, what it's what about. what it means to his mom. Yeah. That's what, also. That's what it's about. For yeah. sure. That's for exactly sure. what it's about. And so those moments for, for us have been like key to what we're doing. Every time we step in the building with them young, yeah. with the young people, because we understand how the Boys and Girls Club at the time or those community centers that you go to yeah. or whatever, the basketball camps or whatever yeah. you go to that was important. You remember those people that impacted you for sure for the rest of your life, and whether it was good or bad. Uh, we just, you know, thankful that we were able to put a yeah. successful program together, especially during these times. And we appreciate you for even coming through I and just showing time. them that. Yeah. It's yeah, a woman Grayson, that looks like me Grayson, in here that, you know, can pour into me as well. Some positive um, feedback. Yeah, we needed that I presence. We needed that presence for yeah. sure. Yeah. Especially as, as, you know, where art is not always part of our community in the way that, like, it's not a possible uh career mm -hmm. where like you can make a living like that whole starving artist mentality i'm like yeah. that's that's yes but also it's not but that's a mindset though i think yes. the starving artist is a mindset i think people if you if you work hard, if you believe in yourself enough and yeah and, and, and stick to your script and your plan yep. of where you want to go as an artist you can get there yep you know what i mean like i mean i've, I've seen it i've seen you do it you know, I've seen other artists do it literally within a span of months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just change their whole situation like that. Mm. Yep. And you can do it. It's it's all up here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can be real broke, but I'm not starving. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Don't never put that on yourself. Right. Nah. Right. <laughs> and how you can dictate where where you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. to me is the freedom that you talk about. Yeah. And so yeah. that goes to Antoine's point about being there. You're yeah. already there because now okay. I know you hate that. I, know I don't you, know why. <laughs> you just I don't know why. you can dictate where yeah. you go. Yeah, I mean, you already, I mean, we talked uh, before before we got on here about like some of your upcoming things that you have going yeah. on. And I'm thinking like, man, these are things that you had to somewhat manifest within thought, put on paper somewhere and different yeah. things. Not saying it was like the companies or different situations to the T, but it's you're shaping your own universe around where you want to go. I mean, we talked about that. Though. We for talked sure. about your your whiteboard that you have all the things yeah, that you want to do. For sure. mm -hmm. I mean, it was last year in 2019. That's like, these are my five-year goals. This yeah. is the things that I want to do. These are the things that I want to achieve. And I've like have done a chunk of those things yeah. have happened yeah. this year. Yeah. yeah. Like some like really big dreams of mine, getting to paint murals in New York. Like yeah. it doesn't seem like a big deal to some people, but for me personally no, as an that's artist, a like that's, that's a big yeah. deal for me. Mm. Like that was one of those things on my list. So like it's, it is crazy because this has been one of the harder years I think yeah. for everybody in yeah. everyone's lives. Yeah. But it has been one of those years where like, I'm going to look back and like that, this year like shifted yeah. and changed my life. Yeah. Like as an artist, as a mother, as a person. So you're there, Lauren. Okay. <laughs> I'm right. there. You're there. Right, right. <laughs> you're you're there you're you're there though. You okay. See what I'm saying? Like okay. that's what I mean by that. It's like I know what you're trying to well, Bisa is here and I don't even I'm know if it's that. Peasant. I just I don't I'm think it's of it all. No, I just feel very regular. I feel regular How? and I'm doing because I just like there's so Man, I look just at people's did. Look, look, there's so Lauren, many people. Lauren, Lauren, you just did. It, it, I mean, not to, but it's out there. You just did a a, a whole. Sp even if you said it was just a giveaway, but you did something with a company that most artists would probably be like, dang, that would be dope if I. It's a little. It's an artist somewhere that probably said that'd be dope if I could do something with them. You know what I'm saying with that particular company. And you got that opportunity to be an inspiration for someone else mm -hmm. to see. You do that and say, I'm aiming for that. You see what I'm saying? And so I, I do. I, so when you say that, I'm like, nah, you're a big deal. Cause you're 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 in the you're on the tongues of people who have money to give. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And a lot of money to give. Yeah. And that's where you want to be as an artist to get that freedom that you're mm -hmm. asking for. I know. And so I think you're there 
is now it's just you're waiting. Now the universe has to catch up for that to happen for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you already manifested it. You did everything you're supposed to do. You worked towards it. You stayed up light. You cried. You got on social media. You cussed mm -hmm. people out. I did. You did what you good. had to do. Mm -hmm. but, you, but, you, but at the end of the day, through all that dark time and that pain, yeah. boom, you see it. You see what yeah, I'm saying? And yeah. that's where I see like, nah, when you tell me that, I don't know, nah, I've, and this is just not me. You're there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You literally yeah. are there. So that's what, and that's inspiring to me as well. I so appreciate it. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying by you having to actually start to own that because when people watch this playback, they need to know that you own that, and they need to know that you believe. Because some people might look at that as like, oh, she's just being cocky, or they being cocky. No, you have to walk with a little. I just think there are so many incredible people with so many incredible stories. I just think I'm but, one part of who all cares the about, other. Look, who cares about other people right now? It's about I care about other people. <laughs> no, who, but who cares about them now? We're talking about you. Right, Don't try right. to reflect it and project <laughs> your success. Like I know other people's success makes other people feel uncomfortable, but what I'm saying no, is, no, I love that stuff. Yeah, but I think that you got to take time to celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you. Yeah, I'm always like this. Yeah, I'm trying to sit more in it. Okay, for sure. Okay, and, yeah. and, and and so that's why we're even doing this is to be able to also celebrate you and uh, the, you know, just to let you know too, man. Job well done and sticking with your guns and really. St Staying laser focused on where you were trying to go, and actually hearing the excitement in your voice for the things that's coming. Oh my god! Has me excited. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. for you, man. And, Thank uh, you, man. Much success continuing on, man. I I, I can't wait to see what's next. Uh, yeah. yeah. Soon. Yeah. yeah. Soon. Soon. So, soon. Speaking of that, coming soon. And I don't know if you wanna. You feel comfortable sharing what you have coming soon, or I know it may be some things you can't share just because it's, you know, dis disclosed at the at the moment. But anything that you want to share, you know, you have. Anything coming. Uh, they're coming all soon. secret. Um, <laughs> when... <laughs> that's, 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 all, that's, that's also that's, good. That's fair. That that's is fair. fair. Uh, there is um, one thing that's coming out. They're they're starting to like talk about it, I think, this month. But then it like comes out mid-January. Yeah. Okay. That's for sure. Yeah. But then there's one job that like, I have a meeting about that like would literally change my life. And I'm praying about it. Mm, I'm yeah. praying about it. Mm. I'm praying about it because... I don't know. It's me and those kids, and like it would just a lot of crying would happen if okay. I get this mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of okay. a lot of things. So would that would that would that job land you moving somewhere else out of state? No. Okay. I'm I'm here for a bit. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just need to know. Wait, look at us. Like, I can sell New York prices and pay Cleveland rent. That's a fact. Man. For That's like, a fact. I, I mean, you know, I, I hate to say that, but you know, some, some when you tell people that, some people are like, nah, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I but, mean, I feel that though too. But I feel like what, what, like, if we're gonna complain about a thing, like, are you actually doing something to change mm -hmm. how yeah. the mm -hmm. our yeah. community yeah. is yeah. here? And yeah. we have talked about that, like, a lot. And, and it's. There, there are so many aspects. There's just that we're all doing different things. Yeah. And I feel like we all just came together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like got over our egos. Yeah. And like the focus was to actually elevate, the, especially the black art community. For sure. Things would be so yeah, different. So for different. Us. Yeah, so different. And like because our, there's a lot of galleries where like people don't know who they are in other places. Nope. And like. It is important, unfortunately, for yeah. like to be part of like the name places. Of course. And I would, and I feel very proud to say that, like, I make art in Cleveland, but like, there are, you know, yeah, not a lot of representation mm -hmm. happens here mm -hmm. in Cleveland nah. for Black artists, mm -hmm. nah. and like that needs to change. But that yeah. also needs to be on like our our list to do our terms, our list of yeah, yeah, like there's too many egos at the table. Yeah, and like we need to get over that. Yeah, big time. There's there's everyone's work is so different here, which yeah. is so incredible, and it's actually interesting because really. Most of the hmm. black artists I know are very different from one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no competition whatsoever. At all. That's what I don't get. There's <laughs> enough all. money right. to be made for right. all of us. Right. And, and for real. You have a photographer mad at a uh, at a painter. And yes. Then you have a painter mad at a sculptor. Then you have a muralist mad at everybody. And then <laughs> it doesn't yes. even make yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 And so it's like, man, look, you don't even do what I do. You don't even do what she does. Yeah. You take pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That competition yeah. thing, just Stupid. like that's, that's yeah. supremacy that also shouts insecurities. Like, yeah. 
I'm not here for any of that. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to be a part of any of that. Yeah, I wham. really just want to like encourage the people that are in our community here. Yeah. Because it is not easy. At all. <laughs> and there's a lot of other white artists that are, yeah. are making it in Cleveland. That's a fact. And like, mm -hmm. so can we. Yeah. And we yeah. can do it with grace and like respect yeah. Yeah. and on our own terms. And, yeah. we're, and we're doing that right now. We're yeah. in the process I've, of doing yes. this right now. Yeah. Yeah. Doing this is, yeah. is an example of how we can come together and yeah. share. And celebrate each other. I mean, yeah. I think, celebrate each other. I think through our relationship as artists, yeah. it's, it's been the main thing that I, I hope that I've been expressing is to practice the, you know, the things that I talk and preach that we have in conversation yeah. is, is to say, like, take away from our conversations and actually go. Now it's not time to just talk and then go home and do nothing. And now it's time to talk and figure out a solution on how yeah. we can change those mm -hmm. things. And so that I mean, being you guys the, are definitely doing that for man, sure. Hopefully we're, we for are, sure. man. And, and sure. hopefully we can continue to do what we're doing and, and, and garner more support. But I'm just, like I said, I'm just super proud of, of what you're, what you're doing. You're you know absolutely. What I mean? Because Shout you're, you're making, <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're making it. <laughs> okay. What I'm saying is that you're making it uh, accessible to people here in Cleveland to be able to see like, oh, she's right there in Cleveland Heights. I'm right wherever I am in the in the area. Hey, she got there, I can see myself there. Yeah. Yeah. It is no jealousy, it's no envy. It's just basically like you are inspiration to the people here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's that, that's what's so dope about that. So nah, keep doing what you're doing. We need you. I ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Not yet. Absolutely. We need you. Absolutely but, not yet. I mean, what you got to do, what you got to do when you got to do it. But what I'm saying is, hey, with anything you need from us, mm -hmm. you already know our so platform is open. open. If you want to come, cut somebody out on the platform, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I feel very comfortable doing it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Speaking, and speaking of platforms, man, I just, uh, how can people reach you? Um, whether social media, uh, email, you have a website. Email or um, our uh, website. Okay. Don't DM people no more, guys. Don't be DMing people. <laughs> it's so overwhelming sometimes. I got people like DMing me on like every account. Yeah. Then trying to text me. I'm like, I hate my phone number. You don't need to have my phone right, number. Right. There has to be some boundaries. Right. <laughs> email, and if I don't get back to you, let's blame it on the kids. Yeah. That's normally what it is. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. right. So I don't know if you, you have anything no, else. I don't have man. nothing else, man. I, like I said, I appreciate you for uh, taking the time out, letting us come into your. Uh, no hard yeah. questions this time, mm -hmm. guys? In real light. It's going to be to be continued. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be to be continued. We're going to keep we gonna keep it light this time, man, just because we're in your space. And we want to uh, we want to be respectful in that way. Respect but you know, if my we, own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if we were somewhere else, I'd be on your end. Yes, I know. <laughs> but no. Nah, no, we, we just want to celebrate you today, though, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And we want to uh, shout out to uh, Black Valve, man, who did, who's been doing an incredible, incredible job Black you know, just in, in, in supporting uh, the museum. And so, yeah, that, that, that's it for us. This is the Museum of Creative Human Art, where we continue Peace. to inspire Peace. the creation of art in underserved communities. What are you we doing? <laughs> You need to go home, bro. <laughs> <laughs>